So here's a complete list of compounds, both medications and over-the-counter supplements with known estradiol-lowering or aromatase-inhibiting effects. So let's go up and onwards to S4 hormone and metabolic modulators, starting with S4.1 aromatase inhibitors. Again, all of the good stuff is already listed here, besides two metabolites from primabolin, which are produced by mushroom biotransformation with impronounceable chemical names. Still put them on the screen. Those two are not specifically listed. So technically you could get away with um, biotransformed uh, metabolites of prima bolin and use that as an aromatase inhibitor instead. I would highly suggest you to watch the prima bolin deep dive, which I'll link at the end of this video. So here's a complete list of compounds, both medications and over-the-counter supplements with known estradiol lowering or aromatase inhibiting effects. Keep in mind that some of these characteristics have only been established in in vitro studies using human breast cancer cells or human ovarian cancer cells or several animal models, animals with cancer in most cases. And um, these compounds are still not specifically mentioned on the binder prohibited list of 2025. So technically you can use them. Just keep in mind that some of the metabolites, again, I haven't undergone the specific metabolite screening to see if those metabolites actually show up on the water prohibited list of 2025. So if one of these compounds spark your interest, please look into the metabolic pathways to see if some of the metabolites still are not listed on the water prohibited list and make you fail on your next doping test. So I highlighted the compounds of interest in bold. Here are the medical aromatase inhibitors, or at least medications. You have atamestane, also known as meton, drodin. You have fadrozole, afefma, finrozole, glucophage, metformin, ketoconazole, nisrol shampoo, or there's also oral ketoconazole, lyrozole, nicotine and their metabolites, anabasine and cotinine, primabolin metabolites like I highlighted earlier, roglatinamide, pyrodulaglutamide, and vorzol resivor. I'm sure I butchered some of those names, but let's not spend too much time uh, on these uh, medications because otherwise, well, the video is going to be way too long and the recording time even longer. And then there's several estradiol lowering over-the-counter supplements and ancillaries. Again, vitamin C, berberine, calcium deglucurate, decarinositol, dinylmethane, fatty acids, glucophage, um, well, it's over-the-counter in some countries, melatonin, Cialis, also over-the-counter in some countries, felproic acid, terpenoids like uh, retinol vitamin A or THC metabolite or tretinone for that matter, and even thyroid hormones can lower serum estradiol levels as well as zinc. So there's plenty of options for you to choose from to get your serum estradiol levels under control, but we already highlighted the dosage ranges of the compounds which I feel are highly effective to lower serum estradiol levels in the segment when we discussed about how to prevent aromatization and thus bring our testosterone levels up right earlier in this video. So let's not go into detail again here. Instead, let's move over to S4.2, anti-estrogenic substances, anti-estrogens, and selective estrogen receptor modulators. The only compound not specifically mentioned here is enclomiphene. Now, enclomiphene is a stereoisomer part of clomiphene, which also contains zuclomiphene. Clomiphene contains about 68% enclomiphene and 32% zuclomiphene. So if you take enclomiphene, even though it's not specifically listed, you will still fail for the exact same metabolites as clomiphene, right? Because it's contained within this uh, particular medication. So uh, keep this in mind. Technically, you can call yourself a half natty and get away with enclomiphene use, but if they pull you aside for a drug test, you will fail for clomiphene 100%. Also, foxifene, which is not specifically mentioned, and arzocephine, also not specifically mentioned. I believe that these last two are still undergoing clinical trials or um, are branded, but not really available anywhere. I haven't found them on any product list of any kind of gray area peptides or online source ever. And then there's several dietary phytoestrogens with known selective estrogen receptor modulating like effects, but that doesn't mean that these compounds found in several food sources, which is all listed on the screen, is going to impact your luteinizing hormone or follicle stimulating hormone levels and thus raise total testosterone and estrogen levels downstream, right? If anything, I would avoid these dietary phytoestrogens for an estrogen-like effect, not a selective estrogen-like effect comparable to enclomiphene or clomet or some of the other serms listed, right? We're using these compounds to raise total testosterone levels downstream, not uh, cry while watching 
the Titanic. Moving on to S4.3, agents preventing active interceptor 2B activation, where they mention compounds that lower or inhibit myostatin levels or myostatin secretion in the body. I'm assuming that the mention of folostatin includes the three different isoforms and variants. So that's folostatin 288, folostatin 300, folostatin 315, and folostatin 344. And in case you're wondering what the number stands for, that's actually the amount of amino acids that this specific folostatin isoform variant contains. So folostatin 288 contains 288 amino acids, and folostatin 344 contains 344 amino acids. I discussed decoy active interceptors ACE031 and ACE083 in great detail in the folostatin gene therapy video, which dropped in the beginning of this year. Give that a watch if you're interested in these kinds of compounds. And while ACE031 is listed on the water prohibited list of 2025, ACE083 isn't specifically mentioned. ACE083 seems to be a little bit more favorable as all of the injections were performed intramuscularly and ACE0A3 is rapidly metabolized in the bloodstream, whereas the ACE031 studies were all performed with subcutaneous administration, leading to a systemic effect, which is certainly not something that you want. So with ACE0A3, there's a tremendous localized effect in the muscle that it's administered into, leading to localized muscle growth. ACE0A3 is a recombinant protein comprised of a modified form of human folostatin 288 linked to the FC region of human immunoglobulin IgG2. It was designed as a decoy receptor for myostatin, also known as GDF8, as well as GDF11, activants A and B, that inhibit skeletal muscle growth and differentiation. ACE083 is also known as folostatin-288 fusion protein, abbreviated to fst 288 FC. Again, you can find a lot more details about ACE031 and ACE083 in the deep dive, which I'll link at the end of this video. And that brings us to the half 90 approved myostatin and activin inhibitors. Again, ACE083. Um, the problem is the monthly cost could range between $10,000 to $86,000 based on the medically approved and recognized and studied administration protocol of 240 milligrams. A083 intramuscularly bilaterally every three weeks. So that's 480 milligrams in total every three weeks. Even at the lowest effective dose of 50 milligrams intramuscularly bilaterally every three weeks. So that's a total of 100 milligrams. Uh, based on the current gray area peptide website costs of ACE083, that would be between, let's say, $2,000 to $9,000 per month. Well, you can run a boatload of Incrolex <laughs> and then some for those costs. Um, so it's completely unaffordable for anybody out there. And there's several other inhibitors listed here, which I don't know the dosages of. There's a slight explanation at the end of each listing. There's also Laprog, Trefogrumab, and Gratosmub, um, all completely unavailable. Haven't seen them on the gray area peptides uh, websites anywhere. And if they are available, they're probably completely unaffordable, just like ACE083 or ACE031. So if you want to improve your folostatin levels or reduce your myostatin levels or have active in inhibiting effects in the body, strenuous resistance training gets the job done. Prolonged fasting over 72 hours actually increases uh, circulating folostatin levels, but doesn't change myostatin levels. Uh, also increases growth hormone levels, uh, partially in by increasing ghrelin secretion. Sleep regulates a circulating folostatin level, so sleep Again, increases testosterone levels, increases growth hormone levels, and improves regulating folostatin levels, which inhibit myostatin. So the more you sleep, the better you grow. Who would have thought? Androgen deficiency modulates myostatin and folostatin levels and prevents sarcopenia. Again, I look into the segment discussing the over-the-counter supplements and why they approved compounds which are known to increase testosterone, estradiol, DHT, DHEA, etc., Vitamin D and several of its metabolites reduce myostatin levels, so good to supplement with that, besides the fact that vitamin D enhances testosterone production. Epiketathin reduces myostatin levels and increases folostatin levels um, if you take one milligram to two milligrams per one kilogram of body weight daily, so you have to megadose that to a certain extent. SLL cysteine found in garlic reduces myostatin levels. Unfortunately, I was not able to find how much SLL cysteine you actually need to consume or how much garlic you actually need to consume for mouse satin levels to be reduced. Um, and again, if you eat a boatload of garlic, uh, you're probably not making it pleasant for everybody else 
in your immediate surrounding. Um, although garlic does contain compounds which prevent TMAO formation, but it's probably better to take uh, those compounds in supplemental form. And then not only does leucine, HMB free acid or HMB calcium and creatine monohydrates improve collagen synthesis and protein synthesis in the body, they also inhibit myostatin-induced muscular atrophy. So why not supplement with leucine, HMB, and creatine monohydrate? And again, creatine monohydrates, also good for sleep. So it's a no-brainer to add all of these in at um, effective dosages mentioned on the screen. And I discuss all of these myostatin-inhibiting compounds and folostatin-increasing compounds in great detail in the video titled, Is Myostatin Blocking Your Gains? I'll link it at the end of this one in case you're interested and you want to know more about these compounds.